for the episode, check out. Now before I begin, if you follow my videos, you see I have a new tie. And I like this one, but I don't like it as much as the lavender one. So unless I got a lot, get a lot of people saying, you know, this one's the best, this one's the best, you've got to go with this one. I'll switch back to that one. And that's my favorite costume so far, so I'm probably going to stick with the lavender tie. But let's just jump right into the episode. thought it was a great episode. Really well done. There was so much damn tension in it that you could, couldn't cut it with a knife. It, it'd be too thick to even do that. But it was so well done. It kept you guessing. It kept you on the edge of your seat. Especially the ending. Holy hell, the ending. I was so ecstatic. On the edge of my seat, you know, oh my god, we're figuring out so much more about Norman. This is happening. That's happening. There's so much happening to different characters. It's not just Norman. But, I mean, that's the main part. That's, that's the biggest thing. But you have that big thing with Norman that happened. You have all these other things too. And it balances out really well. And that's one of the things this show does really well. It it doesn't just focus on, you know, this is what happens to Norma and Norman. You know, this is how they become, you know, to what happened in the movie Psycho. This is what builds up to it. There are a whole bunch of side stories. And I think they juggle these very well. But I will get to the ending when I get to the ending. One of the things this episode did really well was it showed... How the Caleb situation affected pretty much everybody, except for like, you know, people like Romero and people that are on the side. But pretty much any of the main characters were affected by it. Whether they were affected directly, or whether they were affected by how other characters were affected, and therefore were affected indirectly. So great, you know, so much tension is building up, like I said. It's all heading to a breaking point for every character. You know, everybody's going to end up in a bad situation. Some worse than others, but everybody, unless they turn around, is going to end up in a bad situation. And I don't see them turning around. So we wait, we start up, and Emma is in bed with Gunner. And I don't recall the show ever naming him. I read her, his name in her blog which you guys should totally check out if you're a Bates Motel fan. It's actually a really good read and a really quick and easy read. I was reading it during the first season, but I stopped. And I fell way behind, and there are like 40 entries, but a lot of them were short. But I started all over. It took me maybe 20, just maybe, maybe, maybe 30 minutes to read them all. And I doubt it took that long. But it really gives more insight to Emma's character because she's my favorite, one of my favorite characters on the show. Totally have a fandom crush on her. She's great. But we see, and then she wakes up beside Gunner in bed. And it's definitely trying to lead us to the fact that they slept together. But we don't really know. She got so drunk the night before, she doesn't remember anything. And she goes outside, she's just definitely disgusted by it. She's sickened by it. And that's when we find out that Dylan is passed out in his truck, so drunk that he's puked all over himself. His head's hanging out the window, pukes going down the side of that. And it's all because of this whole situation with Caleb being his father. And Dylan, the effect that it had on Dylan was one of my favorite aspects of this episode. You know, I'm really thinking Dylan is he's graduating as a character. He's getting better as a character. You know, I'm really starting to like him more. Again, not my favorite character, but I'm obviously starting to like really, really like Dylan's character because of so much that he went through in this episode. And just the fact that he's sitting there and he has so little self-control. This is a guy that watches weed for a living now. You know, he's had a criminal activity. He's a tough guy. He, he normally has a lot of self-control, but this is broken him. And Max Theriot is, a, I'm pretty sure that's the actor that's Dylan, does so well with showing this. You really see his struggle. You really see what he's going through. You really see how much it affected and how as much it's pushed him into this deep, dark corner and this deep, dark pit. And he's in so much misery, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. 
He doesn't know how to deal with it. This is freaking Dylan. Okay? Wow. So great. I literally went on a rant there. That's awesome. So, Emma freaks out because, you know, one of the, the guests is complaining about it. She tries to wake up Norman, and at first he's not waking up. And so he jerks around. And this that may have just been him waking up, but I'm thinking that was something a little more in depth. Because a lot of what this show does is not air it. Now, there's so little in it that's just... Just, just, just it is. Most of it, even the smallest thing, has something to do with the show. I mean, the plot and the characters and everything. And what was going through his mind? Was he having a dream? What was he doing? What was he thinking? Why was he so sound asleep and why did he jump so much? And I understand if anybody suddenly wakes you up, you might jump like that. But this is, this is Norman. So, what's up with that? So, anyway... You know, he goes outside, and Emma and Norman, they drag Dylan into the hotel room. You know, though, Norma comes in, and, you know, she starts trying to clean up, and she's really affectionate towards Dylan while he's, you know, unconscious. She, like, crests him on the forehead, she covers him up to keep him warm. And this is where you can start to see that this whole thing is really affecting her as well. You know, it's bringing back memories of what happened, you know. She doesn't like him hanging around. She doesn't like him being an influence on Dylan. And she, she does so freaking well. Vera Farminga does so well as well with showing this. Again, you really see the struggles that she goes through and how it affects her. And how it's already turning her world that's already upside down, upside down all over again and shaking it. And it's like it's, it's shaking the whole pot of all the relationships and everybody. Like, Emma's even affected by it. Not directly because she doesn't know what's going on, but because Norman is affected by it. She is therefore affected by it. Because she still cares. You know, even though she's going through a lot, she's still a really sweet girl. She really cares because when Dylan and Norman having their fight because Dylan doesn't believe that Norman knows nothing about it and he kind of hints about his father not not Dylan's father not Dylan's real father Caleb but Norman's father the one that got killed and you saw that at the very beginning of the first season so he kind of he just tells him straight out but he kind of hints like you know maybe you're suppressing memories that you don't know about something about the dad and you know uh, he's to just say that to Norman he's really got to be stressed out so again, you know, he wouldn't normally do that. Usually really calm and collected. Great acting there. So, like I said, Emma is watching them and she really wants to get to the bottom of this. She, she tries to ask Norman about it, but he's really secretive. He doesn't want to tell her. And I've noticed Norman is treating Emma like that friend that he kind of looks down on. That person you look down on, you don't want to share anything with, you don't really want to trust, you don't really want to open up to, they're just kind of there. At first, they were really good friends, and I think in a way they still are. He really treats her like that, and that sucks, because he shouldn't treat Emma like that. But it's also good, because it really helps, you know, push her character down the this endless spiral, because she's really getting way too much into Gunner. And I'm going to skip forward a little bit because I'm talking about Emma. But the whole time she's avoiding him. He pulls up, she hides. You know, and then finally she eventually goes to him and asks him, you know, did we sleep together, basically. She kind of stumbles her words around. She doesn't want to ask directly. But he says no. But did he? Did he? Did it happen? Did he just say no to lie to her and make her feel better? And she does admit that she doesn't want to sleep with him at some point, and she's still way too much attracted to him. When she walks off, he's really smiley about it. And I'm really thinking that she's retaliating because of everything that happened with Norman in the first season, and with this whole new, you know, and Cody situation. They're definitely getting close. I think Emma still has these secret hidden feelings from Norman, and that's just pushing her. Further and further, because that's when she really started to rebel. 
that with the whole Bradley situation. So, you know, Gunner is very immature. He's very much a kid. Emma's really smart. I was one to be like, Jake, and like, Emma, 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 you were so much smarter than this. Why are you going after this guy that's clearly bad for you? He's clearly going to hurt you in the end and put you in a bad situation. But she's got to go down that spiral. She's got to learn her lesson. So, getting back to where I was. Dylan goes into town. He runs into Caleb. It's really awkward. He basically tells him, you know, you're my dad. You raped Norma. And he says, and Caleb, no, that's not exactly how it happened. That's not exactly true. And I'm still wondering what happened. I, I'm more siding with Norma, even though I know she's insane. Really siding with her this time. But Caleb gives the money back, and I'm iffy about that. I'm, I'm still thinking that he's not all that good. I still think he might have been trying to scam people, but I don't know. But anyway, so, Norman. Let's get into some Norman here. Yes, Norman. He is upset because Dylan yelled at him about thinking that he didn't he knew something when he did it. And he confronts Norma about it. He's like, you know, why what aren't you telling me? What else aren't you telling me? Why did you tell me about this and what else are you not telling me? And she says that she there's nothing else she's not telling him, but I don't buy that for a second. I think there's still so many more secrets. But one thing we know that she's hiding a secret about what really happened to the, uh, Norman's father because we're still not clear on that and she's not telling him anything so we know she's still holding secrets and if we, we didn't know about that we could still suspect her because she, 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 she's that way she's very clingy she wants to keep people Norman with her and she's even getting that way a little bit with Dylan so you know she starts crying and you know Norman gives her that really awkward you know hug, he's behind her, he's hugging her, and it, sorry, so the video right now is kind of weird and messed up, uh, kind of off, what happened was it stopped recording because my camera has been acting up a lot lately, and it did not delete the videos that it was supposed to, so it ran out of room and shut itself off, and I actually recorded the second part, and it ended up not working, and it was corrupted, Luckily, it saved the first part, so I'm just doing this again. Uh, so that's why this seems off and awkward all of a sudden. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump right into exactly where I was. So, like I said, Norman is giving Norma this really weird hug, and he's pretty much spooning her, and that's their mother and son. It's really weird. Like I said, I heard from another source, is it's a real husband and wife relationship rather than a mother and a son. And again, that really adds a lot to the show. It really adds a whole lot of style. Really done well. But, you know, she's talking about how she doesn't want Dylan being taken away. He doesn't want Dylan to go away. And as I was saying earlier, she's getting a little clingy on him. At first, this wasn't the case at all. Not at all. So not the case. Because she didn't like him, you know, he'd been away from the family, he was in trouble. At first she didn't like him at all, but she's really grown on him, and he's grown as a character. So, she's afraid that he's going to get taken away with everything that's going on, because, you know, there's a lot of tension between those two. At least it comes up. But, uh, Norman's like, you know, I'll take care of you. And he has that weird, complete, you know, zombified, like, kind of almost comatose, just a menacing gaze that stares off into space as he is on his arm around her and you know something's going to happen he's going to, you figure that Caleb is going to get it you know he's going to deal with Caleb eventually because he, he's pissed off he's messing with Norma he's messing with the family don't do that and you know of course he, he something happens with that later on and I'll get to that but Anyway, Norma starts cleaning the house, and Cat wants in just a minute. Rufus, Rufus, you want to come in and get in the video? Come on. Come on. Say hello to everybody. Come in. Say hello to everybody. 
So, come on, I got you. So anyway, she's cleaning, and I really think it was meant to say that, you know, she's trying to get her mind off everything. And, you know, she gets the phone call, and it's from Christine, which is the director lady that I kept, believe they kept calling, kept calling the director lady last review. Her name is Christine. And the guy that is interested in Norma is named George. So, she's, he's, she invites Norma to a party, and she's like, you know, I can't do it right now. There's so much going on. And you can tell us how stressed she is. You know, she's, there's almost, her voice is almost dead. It's really tired. She acts that really well. Vera Von Bingo acts it really well. And I also love Norma's style because it's not like a normal, you know, normal day mother, modern day mother. It's, she kind of looks like she would fit really well into the 50s. And that was the way the teacher was too, in a way. Um, Emma Watson that got killed. I'm mean, not Emma Watson. What am I saying? That, that's an actress's name. I'm getting mixed up. But Blair Watson. You know, she was kind of like that too. She had that pinup kind of look. But that's a, well, that's the style of characters is something I really like in this series. And I'm sure the costume designer is somebody else. But at the same time, Vera Farminga pulls it off really well. But later. Christine knocks on her door, and I thought this was a really good fake out in a way because in the last, after the last episode, we saw the previews, and in the previews for this episode, all we hear is Christine saying, "I know something about you, Norma Bates." You know, yeah, well, and she uh, she says that, but then she's just like, "You don't do well around people," or you know, she basically says like, "He's socially awkward." And it's not a big deal. It, it leads you to believe that. And it's like, there's nothing. I thought that was a really awesome fake out. So. Zane. He's not in this episode too much. But enough happens with him. Anyway. Like I said before. He's really bad at business. He's way too crazy. You know. He's way too unstable in everything. And this is making everything with Dylan a whole lot worse. Because... When everything's normal and Dylan has things under control, he doesn't like saying, Let me let her back out. She's so stingy. Go on, Rufus. Go on. Go on, sweet girl. But anyway, now that he doesn't have everything under the control and he's really stressed out and confused, it just adds to it. Zane is either going to get killed by Romero because something happens later in the episode with him, he's either going to get killed by Dylan, or some weird thing is going to, he's going to get killed by both. Maybe, you know, they'll team up, and Romero will, you know, put up with it, just to, you know, keep the town in his grasp, and, you know, turn a blind eye to that. So, that's making Dylan more, and I think most of the pressure is on Dylan, really. A lot of pressure on Norma, too, and Norman. And everybody, but Dylan's the one that's, you know, he, he's the one, he's the biggest hit, he hits the most by this news that Caleb is his father. So, anyway, Dylan comes home after running into Caleb, and I think at this point he's so confused, he doesn't know who to believe. He's kind of taking Caleb's side in a way because Caleb gave back the money, but. I don't think he doesn't know if Norma's telling the truth or Caleb's telling the truth. And he doesn't know how to deal with the confusion, so he's retaliating. He's lashing out at Norma. He's yelling at her. And Norman's having to wantonness all this, and that's pushing him deeper into the pit. But I think Max Theriot does really well. And if I'm if I'm wrong about the actor, you know, sorry, I'll get that corrected. But I think he does a really good job with showing this. You can tell how stressed he is. He is under so much pressure. He, he's really about to cave in. He's a really tough guy, so that, that's saying a lot. But anyway, later, it's, it's kind of before that, um, when Norman goes into Norma's room, and she's getting ready for the date with George. That's his name. And, um... He, she's, he's watching her dress in a way. And it was kind of like the whole deal with Miss Watson. And he, he's like strangely sexually attracted to his own mother. And that's weird. But again, it works for this show because it's, it's awkward. It's out of the norm. It's so messed up. But it's very Norman. Anyway, so 
you know, George shows up, and I'm already suspicious of him. There's something about his demeanor and his manner and his attitude that's just off, and I can't quite place it. One of the things is later, this is this is more obvious, but later when he drops Norma, Norma off after the date, because the date was stressful, you know, that guy was talking about the bypass, and Norma was clearly upset, and she's already dealing with all this bullshit, but she has to deal with this guy talking about the bypass, which is going to hurt her business, and it's doing so well at this point. But anyway, when she gets, he's acting all nice about it, trying to calm her down and console her, but when she gets out of the car, his face completely changes, he kind of looks upset, angry, there's something not right there, there's definitely looks like a malice. And it's not the same thing that Norman does, but it's definitely there, and I'm suspicious of him, which makes me suspicious of Christine, which I've always been, because she was the one that hooked him up. So, we see Norman, and he's gone back to the, um, of course, you know, he's gotten the number from Cody. And, you know, that, like I said, that was really messing up with everything because, you know, Emma has to see that. I think she still has feelings for Norman in a way. And seeing Cody is pushing her further and further down that pit and pushing her more towards Gunner, like I've said. But he has the number and, you know, she yells at him about not being at tech practice, but he's there the next time. And he's beating on some prop with a hammer. And Cody's like, dude, calm down. You know, stop hitting that so hard, you know. Because he's really willing into it. And she, she tries to calm him down and he consoles in her a little bit. He doesn't tear the whole situation, really, but he just gives her just enough to go on which she won't do with Emma, which she's known for a lot longer, and it's honestly a lot better for her. I really think that Cody is just using Norman, you know, to get what she wants. She can know she can manipulate him in a way. She thinks she's, he's very weak, and like I said, she's just a punky Bradley. And I hope something happens to her. I hope she gets killed off, unless she turns around and becomes a good character for me. It's still well acted. I'm not dissing the actress, but, you know, it's just, I don't want her to get killed. So... We found out that, you know, of course, Gunner says that nothing happened, and I'm still suspicious about him. And Cody is kind of violent because of her past. And, you know, she gets the tire iron. She wants to go down and fix Caleb. And in this process, we start seeing Norman have flashbacks of when Norman told him about the rape. But then he starts picturing it picturing the whole rape thing in his mind and he's got this this like kind of updated stare this updated gaze because in this one there's a lot more anger he's really pissed off and the other one there's a lot of malice and everything and it's same true with this one there's still a lot of malice but this one he looks angry you know he looks like he's pissed off just he's about to explode and he's thinking about everything he's picturing the rape he's thinking of when Norma told him and the only thing that knocks him back into reality is Cody knocking on the door. And, you know, she gets the number, they go up. And before anything can happen, Norman backs out. And he's like, you know, we gotta go. And Cody's like, no, we gotta do this, you know. She's trying to get him to do it, but then he, like, re kind of raises the, the uh, tire iron up. Not so much like he's about to hit her, but he's kind of like he's thinking about he's going to become like he's about to hit her. Like, kind of like, you know, He's getting ready to get ready to hit her. And, you know, she's like, whoa. I think she's starting to get scared of him at this point. Especially when she drops him off later. She's really terrified of him. But he's like, okay, okay, we can go, we can go. So, next thing is Zane and Romero. This was really well done. Romero, I'm really starting to like Romero more because he's starting to show a lot of his darker side. Like I said, I think he's just corrupt enough to help let the things that help the town thrive. He turns a blind eye to a lot of things, but he does have a line. But at the same time, in his town, it's his way. And he comes from, confronts Zane about that. And basically, he tells him it's a warning, you know. It's very subtle, but very to the point, you know. This is my town. Many things are going to be my way. You're going off on your own. That's really not a good idea. You don't need to be doing that. You're going to get hurt. 
And, of course, Zane doesn't back down because he's Mr. Tough Guy, too. And they have kind of a staring contest. And I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. But later we find out that Romero's house is on fire. So Zane somehow retaliated, even though they were at the dock, which is kind of weird if you think about it, because how did he get word out? At least I think it was Romero's house. Uh, I could be wrong. But that's what it, that's what it looked like to me. I may have misheard something because I am kind of hard of hearing, but that's going to push Romero. He's going to tell you out now. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what that side of the story holds because, like I said, Romero's getting better. He's doing a lot better, you know. I'm liking his darker side, you know, his secretive side. He knows a lot more than he's telling. So, one of the best scenes between Dylan and Norma was when they hit their final fight. Norman, I mean Norman, Dylan starts crying. He's so upset at this point that he starts crying. And again, he's a tough guy. He's, he's strong, you know. He's had a hard knock life. You know, I hate to use that term. He's had a really hard life. And it's built him up to be strong, but this is his breaking point. He doesn't know how to handle this, and he's crying. And Norma starts crying, and they're yelling at each other. And at first, it looks like Dylan's starting to back down a bit. But then he gets all, like, back and forth, like, get out of my way. He's trying to get Norma out of the way, and she's blocking the door. She's like, no, 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 you can't go. I won't let you. But she eventually caves in because she, she can tell. She can tell. She can tell. He's pissed off, and she really doesn't know what he's going to do in this state. And Norman is watching this whole thing. So, you know, Dylan storms out. But I thought that scene was great. Both, you know, Vera Farminga and Max Theria acted that out so well. So believable. Their tears are really believable. Their emotions are really believable. You really see what they're going through. You really understand, you know, they're messed up. This is extreme tension. You know, this is insane. Something is it's going up to this boiling point and it's about to explode if something doesn't calm down. Now, this is the best part of the episode. We found out more about Norman, actually, and it's so awesome. I was on the edge of my seat freaking out, like, holy hell, this is part of what's wrong with Norman. This is part of what's wrong with his mind. He, he really is insane. But he goes to deal with Caleb on his own. But when he gets there, he starts having these flashbacks again. And you see that maybe he he's absorbed some of Norma's conscience. Or maybe... Because of the way that he thinks and the way he's picturing this rape in his mind, maybe he th his mind leads him to believe that he is Norma and he's absorbed some of her consciousness, conscience, or maybe he has. It's not really clear right now, but whatever it was, he becomes what I like to call a Norma Norman. And he starts saying, like, you know, I remember everything. I remember you raping me. I remember it all. So he's basically, in a way, either really having Norma's memories or somehow making his mind, his mind is making him think that he has her memories because it's making up those memories for him. Brings out a knife, they have a big fight, you know, all these flashbacks, he's going crazy, he is now Norman Norman, which is so awesome. I really hope they really go on with that. Um, you're really starting to see more in the Norma psyche. And a normal Norman psyche, and you know, he's like split personalities in a way, and it's not really clear exactly how it is. You know, it's the psychological problem, and he inserts like Fight Club reference here, but thought that scene was excellent. Freddie Highmore deserves an award or something for the way he acted that way, acted in that scene. So believable, so dark, so messed up. And he just has that stare the whole time, that creepy-ass stare that he does so damn well. So awesome. Seriously well acted. Like I said, I was on the edge of my seat. Nothing else existed. Uh-uh. Nothing else existed in the real world. I was so glued to the screen. So. Norman ends up in a coffee shop, and Cody picks him up, but he's still... Maybe he's still Norman Norman. Maybe he's more Norman now. But... He's just staring there. And the only reason they knew Cody was because they got her number off of his arm. So they call her. She picks him up. And she's like, you know, 
She's trying to get him to wake up. It's shaking him, not working. It's okay, Norman. It's okay. It's okay. You're going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. She walks in the car, you know, everything's going to be okay. Just take one step at a time. That's it. You're doing all right. You're okay. You're okay. Puts him in the car, and it ends with them driving down the road. He's just... It's like that. I can't do it. I know I can't do it as well as he does, but... Like I said, so brilliantly acted. I'm really, really liking Freddie Highmore. I'm hoping I'm singing him more stuff. It's weird because he's the kid on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Johnny Depp version, but... I don't know that the second half of this review wasn't quite as good, but that's because I was kind of frustrated, but I really need to get it done, and if I didn't tomorrow, thoughts wouldn't be as strong, but either way, I hope you enjoy this review, and hopefully the stupid video camera won't start keep messing up on me, but so excited for next season, next, uh, not next season, but next episode, they build on everything that's happening. Until then, peace out.